What's going on, everybody? Jason back here with JMT, um, back in the basement again. Um, for clarity, I am shooting on the Fuji XS10 with the 16 millimeter 2.8 lens, roll video micro on top for audio, and the Manfrotto Pixie Mini tripod. So this is kind of like my desktop studio set up for 2023 and the foreseeable future. This is how I'm going to shoot from now on to try to get that next level quality that I want and not to have my phone facing front facing screen kind of interfering with the image in case I have some logos and things and even the camera itself and everything flipped around. So, so yep, that's it. So today I want to compare the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter lens against the 16, the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter lens. Um, I've owned both of these for quite some time now. So I got the Tamron. Actually, I bought them both when they first were released. So the Tamron, whenever that was released, um, I got that for Fuji as soon as it came out. And the same is true for the Sigma. So I did pre-orders on both. So <clears throat> I literally owned them as soon as they were shipped out. So that's that's what that. So... I want to talk about how I use them, what I use them for, comparing them, you know, in that way. So right off the bat, image quality, honestly, I'm not going to see much difference in it. You know, I've used them both for events, portraits, um, outdoor shooting, indoor shooting, and they're both just as good. I think in this day and age of cameras and lenses, a lot of the difference is going to be made in the details of your editing more than the camera lens itself, especially with these price points. Anything that's going to be of a certain brand quality, they're not going to ship anything out nowadays that's pretty horrible, especially something that is targeted to enthusiasts and professionals with 2.8 apertures. You know, you're going to be splitting hairs in terms of quality and any difference like chromatic aberrations and sharpness and color rendition is all going to be something you could edit and change yourself so i think we split hairs in that department so you know at the end of the day it comes down to so many other factors like how you use it the size image stabilization you know filter threads all things like that so first up since i got the tamron first we'll talk about the tamron so the tamron 17 to 70 if you haven't seen it here it is it's a pretty hefty lens. Um, I have no specs on me, so this is coming from a guy who just uses cameras and lenses straight up. You could all read specs online, but you know this definitely has some weight to it. Um, it's definitely a longer lens, and um, comes with the lens hood. And what I'd say about this is that this has kind of made my uh, professional kit as like my number one lens. So I use this. If I'm doing something like an event indoors, you know, especially if I'm shooting solo, this will be like my number one all nighter, right? Because it has a big zoom range. I've never, you know, over my enthusiast career, professional career as a photographer, I've never felt the need to have really long telephoto lenses. You know, the only telephoto lens I have, the longest one I have is a Viltrox 85, which works out to about 130-ish on the Fujifilm mount. And I just never felt the need to have, you know, anything longer than that. And even that, you know, I use it for headshots and I would use it as a second prime lens when I'm shooting a prime lens, say like a 23 as my main camera lens, right, on my body. But if I want one camera, one lens, this gives me enough focal range to just cover everything I need because this equates to 25 to 105, which is literally everything. You can shoot a wide scene, a big open room, and then you got 105 at 2.8 to get a tight headshot portrait, you know, with this lens. And, um, you know, some would say, you know, a lot of people get caught up with apertures and you know, having 1.8 and 1.4, 1.2, but I don't, I just don't really think it's necessary because ISO values and the way cameras process now are so good. You really don't need it. And you want it, you want your subject to be sharp 
you're going to need a little bit deeper aperture. You're shooting at 1.2 on a full frame. You're only going to have, you know, the tip of the nose in focus, you know, so let's get let's get real about all this It's marketing hype by the manufacturers. And we really got to get into the real world and use these cameras and lenses. And you'll realize that a lot of it is just fluffy, fluffy noise. So I think the Tamron is a fantastic lens for that all in one event shooting, even outdoor, you know, portraits when you don't want to change lenses. Um, I think it's great for that. So how I use it, I use it with the Fuji X-T2 with the battery grip. So that gives me some weight counterbalance with this lens since it is a little bit bigger. And that allows me to have like in an event scenario to shoot it all, you know, for the most part without changing any batteries. And also it gives me the counterbalance to this lens with a flash, especially to be able to shoot and not worry. So I never have to change lenses. I'm not changing batteries and I'm literally locked in on, you know, taking care of business with, with the event and getting quality shots and engaging with people, you know, and really just diving into the photography instead of worrying about all these different things. You know, as much as I love to shoot with a prime and a small camera, you know, at an event, you need flexibility. And this gives me that flexibility that I like to have. So, yep, Tamron's a winner. So let's move on. Now I've got the Sigma 18 to 50. I think this lens is probably can double in the same way that the Tamron does. So I could also use this as an event lens. Now it would be overkill given the size to have it on an X-T2 with the battery grip and all that. So in my situation, I use it with an X-Pro2, right? That doesn't have a battery grip. So that makes it, you know, less counterbalance involved and you don't really need it because it's a smaller lens. And, you know, you're not missing too much on the long end, like 20 millimeters is a lot. But if you're using your feet properly and you're really engaging with your your people at an event, you can still get the same shots and not worry about it. And if you need to carry that, you know, a longer lens in your in your bag and switch it out when you need it, just for those moments when you need to uh, change lenses. Um, but as a, but it could work that way. Now, I don't use it that way often, and I haven't used it that way often. And I think what this has more been useful for me is an outdoor portrait lens. So a lot of times, I like I said, I like to use primes. Primes are still going to be my favorite lenses, but sometimes you're in a pinch. You want the versatility. You don't want to change lenses. Maybe it's too cold outside. Like I sh I'm shooting in the winter in, in New Jersey changing lenses from say the 23 f2 to the 50 f2 or 35 f2 you know with this cold outside is probably not ideal you're exposing your sensor to the elements so if you just want not to do that and not carry two cameras and two lenses then the sigma would work in that situation because it's lightweight it doesn't take up a lot of room so you feel it has a similar size and weight to a prime especially like the 50 f2 and especially the 85 Viltrox, you're going to be in the same boat weight wise. So you're not missing anything there. And, it, you know, you'll get that focal range to be versatile. So I think it's excellent for that. And um, yeah, it's a winner. Now, another another thing to think about with this lens is street photography and travel photography. Now, I used to have a Fuji 18 to 135 and that's a good lens but the issue i had with it was that it was too big and it was slower obviously with that 3.5 to 5.6 which wasn't bad outdoors obviously um, but when you went indoors then it's like all right i'm switching to a prime you know to get you know lower light situations now what you get with the 18 to 50 you, you get a smaller lens you get a faster lens but you still get a little bit of versatility with the focal range. Not nearly as long as the 18 to 135, obviously. That's never going to happen. But you can still kind of get that sh those street photography focal lengths that everyone loves is all in this lens. right? You got 28, 35, 50. Those are your top three favorite you know, 
street photography focal lengths. And then you get the bonus of, you know, the 75 equivalent because you got the 50 on this lens. So you could get, you know, a portrait here and there in between all the street photography, right? So you get some people portraits and really get more shallow depth of field because of the, of the compression at 75 millimeters. So I think this, this is probably going to be something I'm going to experiment for travel. Um, to have that all in one instead of carrying, you know, two lenses. You, normally I have a two lens kit, you know, 16 and 35 or the 23 and the 50. That's kind of how I roll with primes. Um, but this could be the one lens to do it all, right? And so that's something to think about if you're considering the 18 to 50. So, so yeah, um, ultimately when I first got them both, you know, together, when I had them both at some point together... I was thinking about should I choose one over the other because it seems redundant to have them both. But there are different lenses and they're used for different purposes. And if you have the kit that I have, it makes sense to keep both for their respective differences because the Tamron has image stabilization. So that can work for a camera like the X-T2 that doesn't have that built in versus the XS10, which I'm shooting on now, has image stabilization built in, and I can use the 18 to 50 that doesn't have IS on that camera. And it's a perfect fit because if you think about it, the 18 to 50 doesn't have an aperture ring, and the XS10 has a PASM dial. So it's almost like using your standard Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Panasonic type camera. You know, it's, this is not made with that Fuji, you know, X-T2-ish, X-Pro2 kind of, you know, those those models, that series with the separate dials for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. This is made kind of in the sense that the XS10 is made, you know, with the dials being used, right? Since you don't have that aperture ring. So it really fits that body very well because, you know, when you're changing modes, with cameras, with lenses that have aperture ring for the XS10, you know, the sum of those modes, it just becomes inactive. It doesn't do anything, right? So it's kind of redundant. It just doesn't make sense. So I love the camera, but this seems like the perfect match for it. So that's all I got. I'm not going to go along with that. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.